Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Winter Stroll, and I'm gonna be drinking, let's see, this is a Chilean Cabernet. Um, so let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 canvas. You can get this at any of your local craft stores or online, and you can certainly switch up the size, but that's the size I'm using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint, the colors today I'm using are titanium white, cobalt blue, green oxide, this is a violet purple, Mars black, and burnt umber. And again, you can certainly switch up the colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using four brushes today. I'm using a number 14 filbert brush. I'm using a half inch wide bristle brush. I'm gonna use a number zero round synthetic and a number 12 round synthetic. Uh, I will also have a cup of water for washing my brushes and a paper towel for drying my brushes. Um, and I'm also going to be uploading for you a picture of the final painting. So you can certainly download that and print it and use it as a reference as you go along as well. And that's all we're gonna need. All right, so the first step that we're gonna be doing, we are going to be using the number 14 filbert brush. We're gonna be doing the sky slash background. And the reason why I say slash background is because it is gonna be the sky, but you're also gonna give the illusion that there's some trees in the background too, some evergreen trees. So the colors that I'm gonna be using are white, blue, green, and purple. I'm gonna be applying the paint in a circular motion. So right now I have white, mostly white, and a little bit of blue on my brush. I am gonna bring this area down about three quarters of the way. So if you were to say, this is my halfway point, well, maybe two thirds. So if I was to cut it in three, let's go down about two thirds of the way. Um, I'm gonna start up at the top. I'm gonna be applying my paint in this circular motion when I feel myself kind of running out of paint, then I make a decision, what do I want to do next? So next I'm just picking up a little bit of white with a touch of green. And I'm gonna try and get this sky to be fairly light at the top, but I don't want it to be too, too light. Um, I do want to have a focal point of a light area, which is gonna be kind of the middle of that um, sky background close to where that um, the horizon line is gonna be. At any time, you can kind of take your brush and make yourself a mark where that third of the canvas is. So that way you know, I don't wanna go any farther than that. And so as you're painting, you can certainly use that as a guide for you to kind of stop. Um, right now, I'm just kind of picking up the a variety of the colors, I just picked up white with a little bit of purple. I am going to, in a minute, when I get down to the bottom left and the bottom right of this section, I'm going to be utilizing a darker shade of my blue and green. Um, so that way it's going to end up looking like there's um, trees or evergreens off in the distance. So right now I just picked up some more blue, green, and white. I'm going to make sure that I have the center area nice and light. And you can see I'm kind of overlapping um, the previous sections with whatever color I've chosen to use at that moment. So that way it ends up looking like these all really belong together. Um, and you might find you like the purple and you want to go full on and, you know, really get that purple to... Um, represent itself. Now right now I just picked up blue and green. I didn't pick up any more white. And what's happening here is you can obviously see it's much darker. And this is gonna give the illusion when we get have the whole painting, um, all the pieces of the puzzle in place, that this is kind of evergreen trees that are off in the distance, kind of out of focus. 
um, and it adds a nice effect to the painting. So you may notice that I also like to paint the sides or the edges of my canvas as I go along, um, which is why I reach over to the side. That way when I go to hang my, up my paintings, I don't feel the need that I have to put a frame around it because the edges will be all nice and completed. So I've got some good darkness going on on these sides. I do want to finish up the center area, so I just picked up some more white. And it's okay if you bump into that um, delineation line that you have, uh, because that's just going to add to the effect of it. And you could certainly do multiple layers on here. Whatever um, is visually appealing to you is totally fine. Um, I just kind of wiped my brush on my paper towel and picked up some extra white, because I really want this center area to be a focal point of the painting, so I just keep adding a little bit of white. Um, I don't want it super white because I do want it to resemble, you know, it's a little bit foggy from maybe a recent snowstorm or the softness of the, the sky, the atmosphere is lending itself to make this really have, you know, a multicolored um, feel to it. And I'm, I'm digging that. So for the next step, you know, I'm just kind of finishing up here, tweaking it a little bit. For the next step, I will be using um, the flat uh, bristle brush that you have, the half inch bristle brush. So when you're done with this, you can put this brush away in your water cup and take out the half inch bristle brush and get ready for, oh, my wine's way far away from me. You can get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, what we're gonna be doing is we're putting our walkway into place. So I'm gonna be using my flat bristle brush. I'm gonna be using blue, green, and purple. This is gonna look pretty dark um, on this step or after we're done executing this step, and that's okay because later we're gonna be adding snow and, and some lightness to it. So you can use these three colors at the same time. You can use them arbitrarily, really whatever um, works for you is fine. But what we're gonna first do is we're gonna do an outline. So I'm actually gonna put all three colors on my brush at the same time, and then I'm gonna wipe my brush off on the side of my palette. That way I have an assortment of the colors um, and not one of them will overpower the other one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna visually find myself maybe about a third of the way over and you can just kind of do this and find yourself a third spot. I'm gonna make myself a little dash that's probably about an inch to an inch and a half wide. I wanna make sure that this dash is in my sky. You don't want to have it away from where you've painted. Um, this way you won't need to paint above it later. And then I'm gonna make myself two more dots. I'm gonna make one halfway at the bottom of my canvas, I'm gonna kind of find a halfway spot and I'm gonna make myself a dot. And then over on the left-hand side, I'm gonna pick a spot that's gonna be about halfway up this area. So right about here. So now I have three marks. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the right side of this mark and get it to connect to here with a jagged line. So jagged is gonna be left to right. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go maybe something like this. And I'm gonna end up at that mark. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. I'm reloading my brush because I felt like I was almost running out. I'm not gonna go too far away from this line um, because I, I want it to look narrow up at the top and it's gonna, in essence, get pretty wide here. And you wanna kind of follow a similar um, pattern. It doesn't have to be exactly like it, but if you can follow something that's uh, pretty similar, it's going to give yourself a nice natural movement to this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to arbitrarily, like I just picked up a little bit of purple, and I'm just going to make myself some um, almost swipes left to right within this area. Now I'm picking myself up a little bit of green. I want to color this area in um, but I don't necessarily need to color it 100% because I know that in a future step, we're going to be adding snow, we're gonna be adding some other elements to it that will um, help to fill in 
the, the um, space. Um, what I'm really going for here is just a nice assortment of these colors um, and a good representation. I don't want my edges to be really clean looking, so that's why it almost benefits me to not necessarily paint it all the way, um, and that kind of leaves me with a, a messy look. And then when you're done with this step, you're actually not going to wash your brush. I'm gonna use this brush for the next step and I'm not gonna wash it in between steps. So just take a sip of your beverage, I guess. Stretch your legs, I don't know. Take a break for a second. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step with our dirty half inch bristle brush is we're gonna create the first layer of our snow on this left section and on this right section. So I'm not gonna pick up any more colors. I'm just gonna pick up white. So white is gonna be my color here. And what's gonna happen, I'm gonna be applying it in a circular motion. And what's gonna happen is the remnants from here along with my white are gonna provide a nice, almost dirty base for my snow. So you'll see that it has an assortment of those colors in it. I'm gonna go right up to my path edge and you can do it in circles. You might find that at times you need to just kind of scoot it into these little crevices. Um, you do wanna bring it all the way up to your skyline or your, um, your forest line, whatever you wanna consider that to be. Uh, if you do find yourself uh, running out of some of those base colors and you want it a little bit darker, you can certainly add more of that blue, green, or purple onto your brush. You can tell I'm not doing a really straight line as it meets that, um, that top portion because I, it's snow, so it doesn't have to be really straight. Um, but I do want to make sure that it is all in the, um, the top section. I don't want to leave any, any um, canvas unpainted. So right now I'm just kind of scooting the brush right next to this pathway. You can still see that there is, I still have remnants of those, um, those colors on there, so I don't need to reload my brush with any more um, of the original walkway colors. Um, and we're going for like an icy walkway, which is why we're using those, um, those cooler colors for this particular um, painting. It's gonna look really cool when we're done. Um, it adds a nice, unique effect where it's not necessarily photorealistic, but you definitely have those nice cool winter colors to it. Um, and I'm just kind of finishing up this step. We are going to be switching brushes to um, the larger round brush that you have. Um, so when you're all set with this, which I feel like I've got a good assortment here, just making sure I've got it all painted, um, I'm going to put this brush away in my water cup and I will take out that, um, the larger round brush that you have and prepare it for the next step. All right, so the next step that I'm doing is going to be my back tree trunks and branches. I'm gonna be using my number 12 round brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are brown, black, and white. Bleh. Excuse me, just burped a little bit, sorry about that. Um, I'm going to be using a good amount of paint on my brush. I want these to be kind of light because I know that I'm gonna have darker trees later. Um, in my foreground, so I want I want these to be kind of light. Um, I do know that I'm gonna have my little person walking over here, so I wanna make sure I have almost like an alleyway for him to go in. So um, I'm gonna leave a little space in through here with no trees. Um, when I do this, I channel my inner Bob Ross and I'm gonna make some happy little trees. I'm gonna go fast and whatever happens, happens. I'm not concerned about um, how perfect these are. So I have brown, black, and white on my brush and here I go. Let's see if I can do this so you can see it. So I am going to make these subtle, 
Sometimes the more white you have, the better off it's going to look. I don't necessarily need them too, too tall um, because I am gonna have bigger trees on there later, but I do wanna make sure that I leave this little like alleyway for um, my little person who's gonna be strolling down this pathway to walk. Um, and again, the white is gonna help to make these look like they're off in the distance. Um, they're just going to be little accents behind the big trees that we're going to be doing in a minute. Um, so just know that, again, they don't have to be really perfect. Make sure that you have some crossing over one another. Um, you want to make sure at least some of them touch the ground. I guess if some of them are levitating, that's all right, but you don't want them all to be floating in the air. Um, and I do, I'm having a good assortment of them throughout the, the entire area. Um, you could certainly stop at some point and leave the sides a little bit um, without these back trees, but I think it adds a nice accent um, underneath all the, the other trees that we're gonna be doing in a minute. And that's really all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna go too in detail with these because again, they're just an accent um, helping to add some, to, some dimension to your painting. Um, we are going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you get a good assortment of these back trees in here, you can wash and dry this um, same brush and just get ready for the next step. All right, so the next step that I'm going to be doing is my front trees or the trees in the foreground. So I'm going to be using black and white. You could certainly use brown also, but I'm gonna be primarily using black and white just so they pop and they come right forward to us, almost like a silhouette -y kind of thing. But I'm gonna use white also as snow on my trees. So I'm gonna start them all with black. So what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna kind of strategically place them. I do know that I'm gonna have some reflections in my, um, in my walkway in a little while, but um, I do want this to look like it's kind of going back. So I'm gonna do some bigger ones over here on the outside and they might get a little bit smaller as I go. I like to use a lot of paint on my brush and you might detect that at times I'm gonna be going through some wet paint that's on my ground. I'm totally okay with that. Um, and the reason being is because it's just going to make for some like gray appearances in my, in my tree. Your trees can be as large as you want them. They can go all the way up to the top. You can have multiple trees that um, kind of cross over one another. Um, but a couple of key tips for doing trees is you always want the base to be just a little bit wider as it hits the ground. Um, that's going to make it look the most natural. Um, and you wanna, especially since these trees don't have um, leaves on them, we're gonna want them to be a little bit more narrow as they go towards the tips of them. And again, you can certainly have lots of trees if you wanted to, you could um, just have a few trees. I think I'm gonna do maybe three trees on this side and I'm not sure how many I'm gonna do on the other side. Um, but another couple of tips for getting these um, trees to have nice long branches and maybe like a, a fluidity to your paintbrush is you can add a touch of water to your black paint. Um, that will definitely help you to uh, get these more fine little branches along the edges because most branches are going to be thicker when they're at the base of the tree and then they will um, become more narrow as they um, branch out. Um, so if you can create that illusion with your paint, that is again just gonna add to you know the, the detail orientation of your painting. So I'm just kind of going for some, some good branches on here. I'm gonna do maybe one or two trees on the right side, and then I'm gonna add some, um, some snow to my trees. So 
I am going to do this all in one step so that way when I do add the snow it will also add um, probably a little bit of gray to the trees too which is going to help make them a little bit more natural looking. I like this little um, split that I have at the bottom of this tree and you know the beautiful thing about trees is they can certainly all have their own identity. You don't have to make any two trees look alike. I'm going to make a pretty big one in through here. Um, and of course, now that I like that one, I'm going to do the same to this one because I'm in the mood. Um, you can make little stumps coming off the side. You can really have a whole lot of fun. Um, at the bottom of the tree, I am making it kind of messy. I will be um, putting some snow at the bottom of the tree later. Um, in a future step, we're going to be finishing um, adding a, a lot of detail, not a lot of detail, but um, some additional snow on the ground later. So that will help to um, kind of disguise the bottom of those trees. But now that I've got them in place, now I'm not washing my brush, I'm just picking up some white. And what I'm gonna do is almost kind of streak this through some of these branches. I don't have to do them all. I'm just kind of giving it the illusion that there is maybe some snow sitting on some of these branches. Maybe it hasn't melted off yet. Maybe it just snowed. Um, the heavier you put it, clearly the more it's gonna look like it just snowed. Um, but if you just kind of put streaks here and there, that's gonna give the illusion that maybe it snowed a couple of days ago and this is just the remnants kind of hanging around, um, adding some highlights to, to the tree and whatnot. So this is gonna take me another minute or two. And again, you can certainly add as much as you want um, onto here. I am not adding a ton, um, but this also helps to clean up any, you know, maybe some rough lines that weren't fully executed with the first step of the black. This will help you to um, get it to make like it's a fully realized uh, brush stroke or step. Um, it also helps to make this not so flat looking. Um, sometimes when you just use one color on a particular step that ends up making it look almost more two-dimensional as opposed to three-dimensional. Um, so this is going to help you to eliminate that, um, that two-dimensional look. It will definitely allow you to get more, more life into this and more, um, more interesting information and I think I think that's all I'm gonna do so the next step we are going to be using um, we're gonna use this brush again so when you get done doing this step you can wash and dry this uh, number 12 round brush and get ready for the next step all right so for the next step what I'm gonna be doing is I'm doing reflections of the trees in the shiny um, walkway here. So remember, we're, we're considering this to have like ice and snow on this walkway, so there could legitimately be reflections. So what I'm gonna do is I'm using my number 12 round brush. I'm gonna be using black paint only. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm gonna go directly below a tree and I'm gonna make a line that's about into the into the walkway skipping the snow i'm going to make a initial line that's about the width of the bottom of that tree and then i'm going to take my black paint and i'm just going to bring streaks down to the bottom of my canvas and since my tree gets a little bit more narrow i can certainly make these streaks make the width a little bit more narrow as it goes down so here's my next one. I'm gonna come right about here. I'm gonna make that initial um, horizontal line about the width of that tree. And now I'm going to make myself some black, a black streak that comes down to the end of my canvas, filling in this spot. And so, you know, if you went nuts and have a thousand trees, then you're gonna be here a little while. 
but I'm just going to do my front trees. You could, I suppose, use like brown and white and do some quick reflections of those back trees, but I think for the um, purpose of this painting that that's not really terribly necessary, but if you feel it is, feel free to do it. I know that this one's a little bit more narrow. And if you had low-lying branches, you could certainly add that into the reflection if you wanted to. Um, but again, for the purpose of this, I think if you just bring them straight down, that's all you need to do it. And I do have one little spot right here that I want to address too, because I've got some snow in through here and some of the shiny walkway. So I want to bring this little reflection right down there. And if it skips a piece of snow and you still have more um, of the wet, shiny, icy part, then you can certainly bring it down there. And then for the next step, we are going to be using the, um, the half inch bristle brush. So you can wash and dry that and get ready for the next step. All right, so the next step, we're gonna be using your flat bristle brush. Um, I'm gonna be putting snow on the ground. So this is my second layer of snow on the ground. I'm gonna be using white. Um, you could use other colors if you want, but my main goal here is to kind of disguise the bottom of these trees, as well as maybe add a little bit of fluffiness in these areas that are coming into um, the walkway. So I'm just kind of, you can dot it, you can rub it, whatever kind of works for you. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit up and through here. What you don't wanna happen is you don't want to, it to look like you're avoiding your trees. So if you do have a spot that you want to add a little bit of white to, and if you need to bump into your tree, just bump into your tree and then you know correct it with a swipe of a finger or you can um, fix it later, but you don't want it to look like you're avoiding a tree. So I'm gonna, add, I'm just adding some thick areas of snow in through here along that walkway. I like to do it kind of on the top side of these little pieces that are going into the walkway because I'll add like a little shadow underneath them later. Um, but again, this vibrant white snow is going to make it look nice and puffy for you. Like there's um, little snow banks here and there. So I'm adding a little bit back in through here, making sure it doesn't look like I'm avoiding that tree. Maybe a little bit in through here, a little bit under my tree. And again, under the trees is one of your main areas that you wanna put this fluffy snow. Gotta move my wine glass. Um, I've got some under here and you've got a nice base for the rest of the snow so unless you feel like you've got you know you have reason to go back into the rest of the snow and add more I would just kind of leave it as is um, but make sure that you've got a good um, vibrancy for this snow as it's hitting the walkway and that's all I'm gonna do for this step so the next step, I'm gonna be using that small brush that you have. Um, so when you're all done getting as much snow on here as you want, you're gonna put this brush away in your water cup and take out that um, small pointy brush. I think it's the number zero pointy brush. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we're gonna draw our, our paint, our man, walking or strolling down the pathway. I'm gonna use my number zero round brush and I'm gonna be using black paint. I'm gonna use black and white paint, but mostly black. So how I like to do this is I'm gonna draw a series of shapes that are going to give you the illusion that this is a person. I'm not going photorealism here. I just want the illusion that this is a male figure strolling down the path. So how I'm gonna start this, I want my, I'm gonna do it somewhere in this vicinity. I want my head to be above my horizon line. So I'm gonna have my head somewhere here. I'm gonna have my torso somewhere in here and my legs somewhere in here. So I start with my torso and it's going to be a soft rectangle, long rectangle. So I know that I want my head above the horizon line so I'm gonna make this 
somewhere in through here. So it's a soft, think of it kind of like um, a, a more, almost like a oval, but a little more on the square edge side. So that's why I call it a soft rectangle. Because to me, it's like a rec, oops, my hand just went in wet paint. It's kind of like a rectangle with um, rounded edges. And you can make it as big or as little as you want. Um, he's probably a little bit bigger than I had anticipated, but that's okay. Um, so that's gonna be the start of it. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a head on him. So when I do a head, I think of this as almost like the top part of a teardrop. So I want the neck a little bit skinnier and the head to be, um, the top part of the head to be a little bit more wide. Um, and you wanna do it in proportion to the body. So if you, know, if you need to stand back, um, I would definitely recommend going small before, you know, you can always make it larger, but it's tough to make it smaller. Um, once I get the shape on there, then in order to make this look uh, masculine, what I'm gonna do is put what I believe to be like a male hat on it, which is just gonna be a sideways brim um, or a diagonal line. And now I'm gonna do his legs, which are gonna be like an upside down triangle, but they're gonna have, um, it's a little bit shallower than the bottom of his shirt. And then I just square off the bottom of his feet as if they're coming right at you. Um, so it's not, there's no detail on here. Um, and then I need to immediately go and do my reflection. And when I go to do my reflection, I'm going to be doing the same um, thought process, only I don't really care if I have it exactly as my man is. So I just start maybe about a quarter of an inch or a half inch away from his body and just make myself a couple of streaks and make it a little bit wider at the bottom part. So again, almost like a, a rec or a triangle. And then I'm gonna add, I didn't wash my brush, I'm adding a touch of white onto my brush and I'm just putting a couple of dots of snow on his hat, maybe a little bit of streaks on the shoulder. That's all I'm doing. So when you're done with this step, we're going to uh, switch brushes to that uh, half inch bristle brush for the next step. So get ready. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we're doing snow on our walkway. Um, I'm gonna be using my half inch bristle brush. I'm gonna be using mostly white, but I will also, I'm sure, use purple, green, blue, and black. So the reason I am gonna use these other colors, white is gonna be my dominant color, and I'm gonna add some streaks that are gonna look like snow just sitting on the top of here. But I know that the white can overpower. So when the white begins to take over, I can dip my brush in the blue or the green or the purple. I can also use the black to add these little shadows or darker areas underneath these um, snow drifts that have come into the walkway. So I'm gonna start with white, and I never use a lot of paint on my brush for this step. So I've just got a little bit of white. I wipe my brush off on, on the side of my palette. And you wanna have this snow coming on top of your reflections, not your man. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of skirt my brush left to right. I'm really kind of looking for the spots that I missed when I was doing the initial um, painting of the walkway. Um, and this way, this is gonna give me a nice, full, completed um, area of, of, of the walkway. Um, I wanna make sure as I'm going over the reflection of the man that I don't forget that the man is standing there and make sure that I don't cover any of his real body. Um, now I'm gonna put maybe a little bit of blue, green, and purple on my brush just to make sure that this um, 
is all represented nice and well and I've got a really pretty um, glaze over the top of the walkway and you can make this as smooth as you want it can really just look like ice um, you can still detect the nice um, reflections of those objects um, in the slickness of the of the um, of the walkway and this I just spotted that I had a little piece of wet black so I'm actually going to utilize that you could pick up additional black but I noticed that I had a little wet spot there so I'm just going to utilize it um, I picked it up and now I'm using it as like a little shadow so there's that black that I was uh, talking about that we could use um, oops I have a little bristle I want to get rid of um, and I'm really just kind of going underneath the snow drifts and this is really makes the um, appearance of this it brings that three-dimensional element into it because you're you're adding um, you're adding the shadows you're adding the dimension into it and again I'm just doing it on the bottom side of these snow drifts and if you felt that you wanted to go a little bit further into it that's great um, but I really am um, enjoying the way that this is looking at the moment um, I don't think I want to do too much more to it so at this point I'm gonna call it um, we do have one final step which you have on every painting and it's gonna be with a small brush so when you get done adding the um, nice re the nice glaze onto your walkway you can put your bristle brush in your water cup take out your small brush and get ready for the last step All right, so the last step to any good painting is to sign it. So I like to sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. Um, you could certainly sign yours wherever you want. I'm gonna use black paint for this one. And I think I'm gonna sign this one underneath this little tree over here. I like to use my initials. Um, but again, this is your identity, so you can certainly sign it wherever or however you want to. Um, and that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I love, I hope you love your painting and I look forward to painting with you again sometime.